Boston Sports Biz Radio. That's my buddy Chris over there. How you doing, Chris? Hey, I'm doing great, Rob. Chris McCarthy. So, so the um, co-founder, COO of Fan Saves with an S. That. And um, it, you know, the good thing about Saturdays is we get to dress like twelve-year-olds. So you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not even wearing pants. No. I'm oh, kidding. wonderful. That makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th thanks for the time this morning and uh, being flexible. You're definitely somebody who uh, I just see out there right now. And I know we spoke before who's just making a name for themselves in this space. And uh, I want to dig into kind of how you guys did it and all that other stuff. But so tell us your story. What's what's Chris's Chris McCarthy's personal story? How did you get to this point? Yeah, for sure. True blue Canadian, um, you know, grew up playing hockey, idolizing hockey and uh, kind of followed my career. So I grew up in Ottawa, Ontario, uh, played competitive hockey all my life and played junior. Um, and then my before junior, my my major midget year for my draft year, the OHL, I ended up tearing my ACL. Um, you know, I was playing up with a higher level above me and that really devastated me. So, you know, I came back the next year with hopes of, you know, still trying to get drafted and I ended up tearing my uh, MCL, fracturing my meniscus and like, you know, um, fracturing my kneecap in six places. So that was kind of it for like my hockey aspirations, but I really wanted to go to school and get my education. And so that's where my life took a turn and ended up going to the States for a couple of years to play hockey. I uh, went to like a community college prep school, ended up coming back home because um, I, you know, I just couldn't afford an education in the States. You know, the dollar was, uh, the Canadian dollar was really low and it was pretty expensive to go to, to school in the States. So played junior and then I got uh, the opportunity to go play in a new league called the Federal Hockey League, a new minor professional league. My, my buddy that owned a Greek restaurant that I was working at in the summer, like, you know, owned, uh, took over his ownership of uh, a franchise. Um, and he signed me to play in the back of his Greek on wheels location kitchen. Uh, I signed <laughs> my first professional contract. So I'd say that's pretty rare, but. Uh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, that kind of led me into pro hockey. I went to school, I went to university at SUNY Potsdam full time while playing an hour and a half away and was able to get my degree in business admin. And then my last year, uh, I was the captain of the team I was playing for in Watertown, New York. And the coach and general manager got fired halfway through the season. So the owner said, Chris, you're going to take over the team as GM. And I want you to, you know, to hire a coach and take over the team for the rest of the year. So it was a really cool opportunity for me because I had just graduated with my BA in business. Um, you know, it was my first chance to like work in the front office, let alone like manage an entire organization. So that gave me some really great experience, kind of like shifted my mindset to like wanting to work in the, the professional sports industry in the front office, whether it be sales or marketing, I had a, a passion for that. Um, so did that for a few years while playing, continuing to play, I worked in the front office. And then uh, this is where my current phase of life kind of took over. I was playing in Cornwall and I broke my finger in a fight behind the net. And I, uh, I went to the owner and I said, look, I'm going to miss nine weeks. I, I'm not making any money. Like, can you hire me as a sales and marketing director? I've done this in the past. Our team could really use some help in that space. So he did. And that's when I met Shannon. And I always say like the best thing that ever happened to me was I broke my finger because hmm. it allowed me to meet Shannon. And together we took over the team, um, all of the sales and the marketing. And it was really in the summertime that we were out selling sponsorship for the team where, you know, we first found the pain point for fan saves and, you know, business owners kept saying, we want more out of our sponsorship. We don't feel like, you know, traditional forms of advertising, like a dashboard or a ring board are really going to provide us with enough value for our buck. So we knew that, you know, sponsors wanted more. They wanted something digital. They wanted something that allowed them to track their return on investment and something that allowed them to actually collect customer data. And none of the traditional forms of advertising in our packages could satisfy that need. So one night I remember we were super frustrated after a long day of sales and we were looking at each other and we were saying, what can we do to like engage the fan with the team sponsors? And that's like when we had the aha moment and we created fan saves. So that's like a long winded story up to the, you know, like how we created fan saves. But I, I think like, every entrepreneur has like moments in their life that lead them to a certain point that they're meant to be at and to meant to solve or find something. And that was, uh, that was my story leading up to it. That was your moment. So how did you guys take it from an idea to actually put executional steps behind that? 
For sure. So we actually like Shannon created this app on like a, an app maker, like free app maker online. And it was super, super basic, but we actually went around and showed different sponsors. And we said, if we made something like this, would you be interested? Would you want to Love offer it. a discounted deal? Like, and you know, business owners were really open to it. They loved that they could track the ROI and collect customer data. Um, at that point it was very basic, but we decided to take the leap and we said, let's make a run at this. You know, we're, we had $76 in our bank account between the two of us. And we said, you know what, we, we have a lot of validation. We think we have something here. Let's, let's go for it. So, um, that was a big step. Uh, from there, we created an MVP, which we validated in two cities. We created our go-to-market product, which, you know, was better, but still not scalable. And just recently we released our new update, which is scalable is, you know, we're selling it. Uh, it's providing value to teams and sponsors and, uh, we continue to evolve and grow every day. So when you guys had the idea and you started taking these steps, uh, were you aware of accelerators and support groups and, you know, seed capital and VC funding, or was that just a whole educational process for you guys? It was a huge uh, learning curve for us. Didn't really know anything about it. Um, you know, when we started the business, we were thinking really small minded. We're like, this is going to solve our own problem in sports sponsorship. But then really quickly, other verticals started to emerge. Um, you know, chambers of commerce, events, festivals, single athletes, uh, esports, um, all these different verticals started to emerge, universities and colleges, all that had the same problem of not being able to justify ROI to their sponsors. So that was something that we didn't expect. And then I had 300 connections on LinkedIn when we started FanSaves. I've now got over 2,500 um, in a short amount of time, but LinkedIn has been a huge friend of ours and an incredible resource. We found so many pitch fests, which have like given us the opportunity to grow our brand, but also gain credibility and meet new people. Um, we've learned about, you know, uh, tech accelerators, more specifically sports tech accelerators. We've learned so much about funding and VCs and angels. Uh, there was one point like a year and a half ago where we were like dead set on investment. Um, but, you know, we've learned a lot since then. And I think company uh, shows like Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, like don't really give a good representation of what it's like to go through and get investment. People think like it's a quick thing or, you know, giving away 50 or 30% of their company is cool. Like we worked really hard to get to this point and we know like, how important every percentage of equity is to us and like what we've grinded out to get to this point. So um, it's been a big learning curve. We're looking to do a seed round in the next six months, but we've definitely learned a lot to your question about the industry as a whole. So just talk a little bit more about that, because I think that's where people get stuck a lot of times, especially startups that have, that maybe aren't, you know, educated in the financial world world. So, you know, what do you think is the best fit um, and the best advice you would give to a startup right now who hasn't gone down that road that you went down uh, when they're looking for investment dollars? Do you think it's about the, the connections they have, the network that they have, or just the funding? Are you looking just for a check? I would say to any startup founder, be resourceful. Like, yes, we've like networked our butts off. We've made some amazing connections with angel investors and um, you know, some of our advisors have some really great ties to VCs, but we've been able to accumulate $252,000 without giving up any percentage of our company through government grants, government loans, pitch fest wins, uh, a small friends and family round. Like we've won over a hundred thousand dollars in pitch fest wins. Um, you know, which is, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, but we've, awesome. yeah, it's, it's great, but we've pitched like over 30 times at like a ma like major tech, uh, not tech, sorry, major like uh, pitch competitions all across the world from Berlin to Boston to, you know, uh, just recently Memphis a couple weeks ago. And, you know, like most of those we lost. Yeah, maybe we, we finished in the top 10 or top five, but we lost a lot and it, it built resilience for us. Um, and did and you walk away with, like, did you walk away with new networks and new contacts and new possibilities going through there? hundred percent. And that's why I, you know, a lot of people say don't get distracted by pitching, but I think it's such a valuable like tool. Like if you can get accepted into pitch competitions, apply, apply, apply. I, going back to LinkedIn, we've so, found so many opportunities on LinkedIn. Um, you know, you, to your point, like we've met 
several of, of our advisors, we met through pitch competitions, whether they were a judge, um, we've met referral partners, um, you know, people in the industry that know people that could help us. It's really drove our business and like all of our growth to date has been organic. And like most of our marketing has been organic too. Going to these pitch fests, we were able to stand on stage in front of hundreds or at some of them, thousands of people at a time and tell them, tell them about FanSage for 10 minutes where they're solely focused on us and our brand. Um, you know, and it's great for social media. There's a lot of like great content that we've created from around these pitch fests. So we've really built our brand around us pitching and people know us from pitching. Sometimes we see people and they're like, oh, I saw you at that conference. You guys pitched FanSage. And we're like, yeah, like, you know, so it's, it's been a really like low cost effective way to promote our brand. A lot of these pitch competitions, I don't know if you can see the, uh, the uh, badges. Yeah. Badges. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, behind the, me, the like, lanyards, the lanyard totally. collection. Yeah. <laughs> we like to think of those as like a badge of honor, like hockey yeah. medals, you know, and right. we've learned so much from every conference. So, yeah. So before, before I have a bunch, uh, I have a couple more questions, but uh, talk about um, your contact information. How do people find out about you? Where do they reach you? Definitely. You can check us out on our website, fansays.com. Um, if you're a business that's looking to sponsor a local team and get more out of your sponsorship, you can fill out a form on our website. And we'll push you to the closest team. Um, if you're a team that's looking to learn more about fan saves, you can go also go on our website and fill out a form and we'll be in touch. Um, but you can reach out to us directly on LinkedIn. We're very, very active on LinkedIn. So myself, Chris McCarthy and my co-founder, Shannon Ferguson, but um, there's lots of ways to reach us. We'd love to hear from anybody. Awesome. So, all right. I, I just like to get that out of the way before I forget, because I, uh, I, I marked it down. Appreciate the talk plug. about Talk about um, what did you learn the most that if you, could, if you and Shannon could go back from day one, what you know now, and someone else who's watching this, who's sitting there saying, man, I, I got this idea. Like, what would be the strategy, like the top three or four things that you would say you wish you did back then that would save you a lot of time and probably anguish and, and drinking? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'll think of a few things off, off the top of my head here. Uh, development for us has been like the hardest thing. My co-founder, Shannon, and I are, neither of us are uh, technical co-founders, so we didn't physically code the app ourselves. Um, you know, we've had a couple agencies and a full stock developer, um, that have got us to this point, but it's been a really big learning curve for us. So I would say like, if you're in the technical, sp yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I got a, I got a question within that because this comes up a lot. Would you look for programmers or developers, um, that's maybe something a little bit more off the shelf, or would you have gone from doing it from scratch and hiring a group to do it for you and develop your, your platform? It's a really hard uh, question to answer because like, you know, we've, we've had less than positive experiences with kind of like every avenue we've tried, um, you know, like our, you know, our first, um, you know, company that we worked with, we, we didn't really get the full product that we wanted. Then the agency we worked with, secondly, we got the product we wanted, but like the communication, the transparency wasn't very good. So then we hired the full stock in-house developer and, uh, you know, he works remotely and it's, it's been good, but it's been, it's been hard. Uh, I would say, I would say build an MVP. I don't think it's a bad thing to get an MVP built by like an agency, but like really speak to like, really have like a good mentor or a group of mentors that you can refer to, get lots of quotes, do your due diligence before you make any decisions about who's going to do your development. Um, there are a lot of good developers out there, but they're really hard to find and they're pretty expensive. Uh, like for example, in Ottawa, there's Shopify, right? They're a major company across the world. Um, and they're scooping up developers left, right and center. So, you know, like the, the better ones tend to go to like the bigger companies and like the smaller ones are more junior and, you know, have less experience. So get an MVP built, get it out there, build it, test it and validate it. Um, once it's validated, then, you know, go, go for your go to market product, but build in stages, I would say, and, uh, don't spend too much money on you know, definitely your go-to-market, or sorry, your, uh, your MVP. Um, it's really just to validate your product, right? Um, an advisory board is something that Shannon and I came across like six to eight months into our business. Uh, and a mentor brought it up and we were like, what's an advisory board, you know? Like we thought like once you get investment, then you start a board, but 
you know, you can, you can get advisors right now, like whether you're two months into your business or whether you're a year into your business. Um, we've got like an amazing 10 person advisory board, um, advisors in every aspect of business from HR to sales, to digital media, to the co-founder of the Ottawa senators, people that are huge champions, believe what we're doing and are doing it for the prestige not for any like financial gain. They, they see the vision, they wanna help us and down the road, if that comes back to them, great. Um, if not, they, they believe in us as founders and, and what we're doing. So form an advisory board of people that you trust, um, you know, and they can always change, but you know, down the road, keep, keep track of like who's been really helping you and providing you with value. Um, those are two things I, I think of off the top of my head that if I could go back, uh, speak to another founder, I would definitely recommend for sure. And then go to pitch competitions, go to industry events and go to as many of those as possible. Show up, you know, like while we were in development for two years, pretty much where, you know, we didn't really have a product to sell. Shannon and I were hustling, like I said, going to all these conferences and, um, you know, pitch fest. We're part of Invest Ottawa, uh, tech accelerator up here in Ottawa. And they're uh, incredible. They give us so much, so many resources, mentors, but oftentimes we get to go to events on behalf of like invest auto as a portfolio company so we've been able to go to like four or five major pitch uh major conferences in general in the last um uh, last year that they provided us with exhibiting space and uh you know we again we got to show up um and meet new people and, and grow our business uh, we put fifty-two thousand kilometers and i'm gonna go kilometers so you're gonna have to figure out the conversion that you yourself. lost me yeah <laughs> We put a lot of uh, a lot of miles in our car, you know, and we've yeah. shown up. And I think that's like a, a big thing I'll, I'll leave with is show up um, and make the effort to show up. Yeah, I love it. So uh, get your MVP built, um, get an advisory board and just show up. I, those are awesome. Three, three sound words and words of wisdom by Chris McCarthy. Thank you. <laughs> So this is it. The last, the last question. And the one that I think is uh, that, that says a lot about you, but um, what'd you want to be when you grow up? You know, when you were growing up, what did you want to be in life? Uh, I think that's a simple, uh, simple answer. You saved an easy one for the last one. I, I wanted to be a professional hockey player. I wanted yeah. to play in the NHL, especially, like I said, growing up in Canada, um, it's a part of the culture and, um, you know, I idolized people like Wayne Gretzky and Joe Sackick. And uh, when my career took a turn with two devastating knee injuries back to back in like my prime, uh, you know, draft years, you know, my, my focus kind of shifted. And I, I said, you know what, like maybe a career in the front office working for the Ottawa Senators would be really cool. Um, and then, you know, going through university, I started a business on campus and that was kind of like my first flair for entrepreneurship. And then from there, when I got the opportunity to be the general manager, I kind of changed a little bit. I thought, you know, there could be, you know, I could be an entrepreneur. There's, there, you know, sports tech is blowing up right now. You look at esports, it's blowing up right now. These industries are being disrupted by tech and there's so much opportunity. Um, so, you know, being a tech uh, co-founder, you know, is never something in my wildest dreams when I was younger, I would have thought I would be right now in my life, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been an incredible crazy stressful but so rewarding journey these last two and a half years and um you know having a great co-founder like shannon i wouldn't trade it for anything oh that's awesome chris thanks so much for spending some time with us listen if, and if it wasn't for you 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 uh fighting and being the tough guy behind the net then you wouldn't have met shannon and broke your finger and that all that other stuff wouldn't happen for you just protecting my goalie and look at me now yeah <laughs> right you're just being a canadian just being yeah. a canadian <laughs> hockey player right you couldn't help yourself that's hey, right. listen, um, oh, we, you know that the journey that we're on and, and, and guys like you and, and, and folks like, uh, and women like Shannon out there just trying to be in, um, innovators and disruptors, uh, that's what led me down this road to start an incubator and start an accelerator in sports biz. It's not nothing that we do full time. It's something that my partner and I, that we want to help out folks like you that uh, are doing something great and positive and um, you have the guts to be out there doing it on your own. So um, you know, bravo to you and those, and, and the words of wisdom that you gave were fantastic. So thanks again, Chris, for your time Saturday. And I look forward to even getting to know you and seeing you in person at some point. Absolutely. And thank you so much for everything you're doing for the startup ecosystem and, and co-founders like myself. And hopefully we'll see you soon in Orlando. All right. And, and let's go put some pants on because we got to start <laughs> our day. All right, man. Sounds good.
That's Chris over there. I'm Rob, Sports Biz Radio. Thanks for joining us today and spend a little bit of time on Saturday. Take care, everybody.